What's up NASCAR 15 fans, David Land here. We are ready to go at qualifying here at Sonoma Raceway. Uh, this was the track that uh, the comments section seemed to uh, come to a consensus on uh, for the next track to run in this uh, revived NASCAR 15 Let's Play. Uh, this race will also be presented in the TV broadcast style. Now, uh, this is a point of contention that I'm going to need your guys' help on. Uh, the TV broadcast style was uh, very popular for the, uh, the NASCAR 15 Let's Play from Kansas, but it was not very popular uh, with the NASCAR Heat Let's Play. So uh, I ask you in the comments to go down there and comment how you feel about uh, TV broadcast style for uh, the coming NASCAR 15 and NASCAR Heat Evolution uh, videos. I'm kind of leaning towards keeping the TV style for NASCAR 15, but maybe going back to the uh, raw gameplay for NASCAR Heat. But again, just let me know in the comments. I felt like everybody was very respectful uh, when they did have criticisms. So uh, that's very interesting, and uh, I thank you guys uh, who were able to criticize me without calling me an idiot. So we are here racing at Sonoma. I decided to run the Alexander Rossi paint scheme because he's from California, and I didn't feel like making a new paint scheme for this race. I think uh, I will start making paint schemes again, so uh, while you're down there in the comments section, uh, maybe leave a suggestion for uh, a paint scheme as well, and also hit the like button. Uh, we have been uh, doing so well on the likes recently on this channel. Uh, keep going. Let's see if we can't keep keep getting Very hundreds nice of likes on these videos because uh, the YouTube algorithm, if you follow any bigger YouTubers, you've probably heard them talk about that, is now structured towards uh, uh, viewership interaction. So less people will see it if less people like the video. So if more people like the video, there's more uh, chance for people to see the video, and that always helps me out and helps grow the channel. So, let's uh, get running here at, uh, uh, I almost call it Laguna Seca. No, this is Sonoma, the other uh, California road course, and the uh, only California road course in NASCAR video games. Uh, but yeah, there are a ton of cars out here for Group 1 in qualifying, as you would expect, with 43 cars having to uh, all make time in Group 1. So let's see how we do here. This will probably be a little bit advantageous because, well, that won't be advantageous, but uh, because of the fact that everybody's in traffic, uh, that will make it so that potentially uh, we'll be further up the grid than we otherwise would be. Regan Smith goes to the pole, then we go to the pole a second ahead of Regan Smith. That's excellent. I was kind of, I wasn't really expecting to up, put sure the car on the pole here in Group One of qualifying, but whatever. Now we've got a Bush brother within three uh, hundredths of a second of us. So suddenly the uh, the gap starts to close down a bit. We almost run off the road there, but we were able to keep it together. Now into the what I call the Robbie Gordon corner where you run right out to the wall like Robbie Gordon does. Jamie McMurray knocks us off the pole for group one here as we are mired in traffic. They probably are not, I'm guessing. A.J. Allmendinger, no surprise, he goes to the pole with a 115. Now Clinton Boyer's up there as I'm trying to drive and and uh, give commentary at the same time. Ooh. And I blew it. Well, yeah, I blew it. So we're just going to wait uh, for the uh, end of the group and see if we make it. All right, and we qualify for the next round. All right, here we come, ready to start the first lap of group two of qualifying. Let's see. We can put this car on the pole as we lift off through turn one. A little too much brake. Add some wheel hop, and we're off the track. So we're going to need to come around again and make another lap. All right, now we can officially get this session underway. This time I'm going to lift off a little bit earlier. There's a 117, the last lap, of course, the one I ran off the road in. So obviously this is not going to be a very good, or the first lap, not going to get it the job done, so we've got to be good on this lap. We're already up on our time as of course we ran off the road in the first lap so in, in, anything's going to be pretty much better than that as we run off the road again. The session is over so uh, whatever our lap time is this time is going to be it as we really use the Robbie Gordon line there and we're still up on our last lap. This is a sloppy sloppy lap. 
still a, half, a one and a half seconds up. We're probably not going to get the pole. Looks like that's going to go to Tony Stewart potentially, as he's sitting on the pole right now. But you never know. We can uh, we could pull it out here as we uh, make up some time here down the S's and through this very deceptively slow corner. A lot of people would call it deceptively fast. I call it deceptively slow. A lot. Many a person has thought they can take that flat out in a stock car, and it usually never works out too well. Now around the hairpin and on the throttle and on to the main stretch, whatever stretch there is, and across the line. We're going to qualify 12th, unfortunately, at Sonoma. So the starting grid has a couple retirees with Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon on the front row. Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer will follow them. Road course ringer A.J. Dinger is 6th. As we roll down through the rest of the field, to play the game in the comments of which driver did not show up for today's race. Uh, I haven't gotten to figure it out just yet. I have a suspicion. Uh, I'll see if that suspicion is correct. Nope, never mind. I thought it was Carl Edwards, but he's here. So uh, let me know in the comments who did not show up. Actually, I think I do know who didn't show up. Ah, uh, yes, I know who didn't show up, but you guys will have to uh, let me know in the comments who it is. And let's get racing at Sonoma. Road course racing. Here we come out of the hairpin for the NASCAR 15 Let's Play, the revitalized right, zombified version of the Let's Play. Green is out. We are racing at Sonoma. There are already three wide for the lead. It looks like Jimmy's going to the inside of Stewart, but it's Tony who leads up the hill as we chase. And we go around Harvick and hopefully around Truex, trying to get around Earnhardt. He is being pretty tough, hanging it tough there. Uh, Newman and Harvick go around the outside of us, so we're three wide there. With Harvick shoving me wide, slow down a little bit. And several cars off, including Vickers sliding wide after I kind of hip checked him out there. Now we're into the uh, the uh, turn seven, I think is it's actually officially named as, but. Uh, I call it the Robbie Gordon corner. Now into this corner, uh, one of the hairpins on the circuit, which we get around Ryan Newman. Now we chase uh, Martin Truex as Stewart continues to lead as we head through the S's. And we're getting behind Truex there. One of, one of the cars is off. It may be Jimmy Johnson. No, it's Blaney. Blaney off into the dirt. And again off into the dirt. No, it's Almendinger. What is he doing? What is he doing? as we get on the brakes really late and get underneath uh, Jamie McMurray, but we run Jamie McMurray into A.J. Allmendinger, and it takes both of them into the wall, but we're able to continue. Truex running behind us. Stewart has already completed the first lap. He's at a 1 minute 16 lap on his first lap. We were at a 1 18, so two seconds behind Stewart. And we're going to lock up the brakes bad into turn number one. And I almost completely blew it. Yeah, very right spotter on that one. Now we're totally getting spun out by everybody and my brother. We run across the grass and back underway, but we are well down the order, back at a 29th position. Side by side with a Dylan. Now we're behind a Mears. A Mears, there's only one in the race, one Mears. This is uh, the Mears' home track. The Mears gang, I should say. They're uh, from Bakersfield, California. I don't know if this or Fontana is closer, but might as well just call all the California tracks home to the mirrors as we come behind Greg Biffle and uh, Michael Waltrip as we run through the S's. We're going to have to play some catch up here. I'm expecting there will be at least one yellow. There usually is. Now, whether it's going to come before or after the pit stops, you just never know. And it usually is some shenanigans in the hairpin as we uh, get into the hairpin and underneath Justin Allgaier, which uh, we were able to do. He kind of freaked out, let us through into the position. So now we chase Bobby Labonte, our NASCAR Heat Evolution spotter, as the Bush brothers, I believe, are side by side just uh, up ahead of us. The two Bushes. And shifting into third gear up the hill through the first or potentially second turn. I guess you could call it the second turn. Lift off the gas just a little bit. This was the scheme that I won uh, Watkins Glen in. Clutching post uh, situation. No, I didn't win Watkins Glen in this. I think I won in the uh, 
the target scheme. Never mind. My information is all wrong. Unsubscribe. Disliked. All right, into the corner we go. Around Bobby Labonte. Clean pass. That was almost not a very clean uh, run through the uh, start of the S's there, though. Now we uh, crest the hill here. Got Larson and the Bush boys ahead of us, and uh, J.J. Yaley's actually holding them up as well. So four cars here to pass. Yaley's going to go off into the grass, way off the track. It does uh, J.J. Yaley go? Probably got a bit spooked. And underneath a lot of cars there as we uh, are sandwiched between a couple of Bush boys there. And back on the throttle again. Coming up through the gears. This will be a pretty fast lap time, by the way, too. Uh, we go to a 116, so but Stewart's in the uh, 115s in race pace, so we're still a second off of Stewart's mark, but he's doing that in clean air uh, rather than uh, us doing it by our or, uh, in traffic. And obviously, going faster in traffic is hard because we can't take ideal lines. This is not an ideal line either. Driving across the grass here as uh, Kyle is going to get underneath us. We got a penalty. And now I've spun out, and that's brought out the yellow. Pretty simple uh, thing there. I got a penalty, and then I got spun by uh, Kyle Busch. So I don't know if I'm going to have to win this race by two seconds or not. Okay, regardless of whether I do need to pit or not, I'm bringing the car in anyway. Pitting. Most of the field did pit as well, so unfortunately we're not going to get a advantage, but we are on the strategy that most of the field is on. I don't know how that penalty is going to work. I don't remember how time penalties work. I'm pretty sure it's going to be tacked on to the end of the race. So uh, that's going to be unfortunate. All right, hey, stone dead last for the restart. We enter the hairpin, start ready, the the go, start buddy. at the tail of the field, green. ready to go here, back to Everybody racing today, at Sonoma. And we're going to see how many positions buddy. we can make up here. Nice As we come up through the field, we're already getting boxed in by Eric Almarola. And perhaps we can go around the outside of all these fellas here. And lock the brakes up. And off goes Carl Edwards, along with several others. Going through the grass, looks like a bunch of Gibbs cars from the uh, rear view mirror shot I had as we get turned by Gilliland. And there are just cars flying every which way, all over the place. We're spinning. Michael McDowell spins and the yellow before I got a time penalty. Uh, Matt Kenseth was the, actually the one that brought out the yellow. He spins all the way into the runoff area and that's the yellow. All right, we enter the hairpin ready for the restart. We're restarting 25th after not pitting under that yellow. Hopefully we'll have a cleaner restart this time as we're ready to go again at Sonoma. The green is out. We roll through the little kink right before the restart line, and there it is. We're back First underway. And what's going to happen this time? Probably nothing good as we hit check Kyle Larson just a little bit. Bump draft Cole Witt. Larson almost spins us out. Witt goes wide. Jimmy Johnson and others are wide. Okay, there's Joey Logano driving through the grass behind me. We're side by side with the pole sitter, Tony Stewart. We're into Tony Stewart. He's in the grass. David Reagan's out to the outside. There's still cars just uh, mowing all this uh, dead grass here at Sonoma. That was fun. All right, so now we've uh, kind of settled in just a little bit as we go underneath Jimmy Johnson and try to get under Greg Biffle, but uh, Johnson swings way wide. I think he took out Larson, which uh, wouldn't surprise me if we got a yellow for that, but uh, I didn't see exactly what happened in the rear view. You guys will probably have a better view of that than I did with the TV style replay uh, action as we get on the brakes here. Try to get around this deceptively slow corner into the hairpin for the eighth time. As I, wow, I really got in there deep, got underneath one of the Dillons. And back on the throttle, we're already back up into 11th place. Now we are uh, making some moves here. Tony Stewart, thankfully, way back in the back. Harvick leads the race, so uh, this uh, this has uh, changed the complexion of the race, all the pit strategy, which it usually does here on the road courses in NASCAR 15. And this race is no exception. We're chasing down Brian Vickers, who is exceptionally strong, actually, in these uh, NASCAR 15 
races. I don't think there's been a race yet that we haven't had to deal with Brian Vickers at one point or another, at least in this version of the Let's Play. We get down into the uh, Robbie Gordon corner and moving down into the first hairpin. On the brakes, underneath Vickers, into the back of McMurray, and now chasing down Kurt Busch, who is side by side with McMurray, as we try to get around as well. Uh, can we do it? Can we do it? We are side by side with McMurray, and we're gonna get around him as well, so up into ninth, and we get turned by McMurray, into the wall, into McMurray, and thankfully we got a yellow as the car's wrecked behind us. Well, this was classic Sonoma. A car cuts across another car into the uh, S's and then into the outside wall as several more cars pile in. All right, making a stop under the yellow. We have to because we went on head on into the wall and uh, have to repair the front end damage. Unfortunately, uh, they're changing tires for no reason. It looks like we've got a bit of a stoppage up there under the yellow. So uh, hopefully the game won't glitch out. But uh, back to racing after this. So 43rd again after the accident. We've got 11 laps to go as we come out of the hairpin ready to go. And the race should be back on and now it is. So 43 cars to pass as the race is back under the green. We're following Kyle Busch up and there's Tony Stewart. Unfortunately, he, his chances of victory may be slipping away as we go underneath Eric Almarola. We're gonna get some more shenanigans here, I suspect. As cars roll right off this track. So, uh, not as many cars are off this time as have been previously, but uh, wait till this corner because they're usually a bunch more. And there's a few off, but uh, relatively clean as we run into the back of Case Kane. Into Robbie Gordon and underneath Paul Menard trying to anyway, Harvick as well, and Michael Annette the threat underneath all of those fellas. And now trying to battle with Truex. And I'd love to uh, give McFlurry a piece of my mind once we get back up there to uh, rectify the situation which he uh, wrecked me in as we go through the grass a little bit. And there's cones flying every which way, so that's fun. I was not the cone killer on that one. Cone killing is not the uh, federal offense in the state of California. As we get down into gear number one underneath uh, Jeb Burton and right out next to the wall in which I made contact with it. And uh, we go around to Michael McDowell as well. So now running down into the first corner. And that is halfway according to the spotter. So now we have 11 laps to go as we were right up behind McFlurry. And I couldn't go get my revenge here. Let's see if we can't get up there without spinning the wheels too much. I really spun up the wheels bad <laughs> as uh, I got into turn one and then it uh, carried over all the way through the first couple corners here and went back off onto the grass. Got a time penalty, of course. So that's gonna tack onto the rest of the race. So now, uh, just give McMurray a, a little bit of a help out and assist with that corner. He needed it. So, uh, yeah, I'm still not sure how the time penalties work. I'm expecting you get, to get screwed by that. So into fourth gear. Try to catch McMurray now. The old Jamie McFlurry. And boom! Run into him. Put him into Cole Witt. Cause a bit of a train there into uh, turn uh, the final corner. I don't know all the turn numbers here. Should just call it the hairpin. Robbie Gordon, what I have been calling it. So into third gear, fourth gear. Lift off just a little bit. Ten to go, says the spotter. And on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes. Oops, got into uh, Javi Labani as well. And he's way off into the grass. So we're chasing a top ten here. No big problemos. Back onto the throttle, down the hill, into Robbie Gordon. And around to Regan Smith we go. And into second gear, first gear. 
and around the uh, other hairpin. And we chase Justin Allgaier. Ricky Stenhouse just ahead of him, and then I believe it's Michael Waltrip. No, it not, it's not Michael Waltrip, it's Clinton Boyer, who's been uh, also very fast in this uh, Let's Play. Very, very quick driver, at least in this Let's Play. Uh, he's not in the H. Scott car, so I think that's, uh, that's helping him out a little bit. Right out to the edge of the grass was, uh, was me locking the brakes big time. And I got into the black of Blaney as well. We'll get around him for 10th. They are four wide behind me. Uh, that that is not going to go well, boys. And they decided to sort it out very wisely. So we got nine laps to go, and well, nine positions oh, to make up side. from our tenth place. To win this thing, so that's a uh, the positional lap. Can we do it? Clint Boyer's off off the track again. No real surprise. Mikey, it's actually uh, just ahead of uh, Jimmy Johnson there. So uh, there you go for you, Michael Walter fans, trying to figure out where old old Mikey's running. He is uh, right there. Into Robbie Gordon again, right out next to the wall. And now we uh, may be able to make a chance at Johnson here. Underneath we go. Yes, we do. Keselowski's in a beer wagon. Haven't seen him all day, but he is running the, uh, the uh, Bobby Rahal tribute car. It's very nice. One of my favorites. Good to be running behind it as we uh, get up on the curb just a little bit. Keselowski's been running off. In the third gear, fourth gear. Jimmy's going to go back underneath. Inside, to Johnson car. actually pulls off a pass and lets Ricky Stenhouse go through as well. So two white and blue cars getting through as we dive back underneath. J.J. Yaley's running up here. Michael Waltrip. A lot of little teams running up at the front as they usually do in NASCAR 15. So we've made the one position we needed, we needed to make. Now we've got to pass P8 on the, the eight to go lap. So let's see if we can get around Michael Waltrip onto the curb there. Now on the throttle, hard on the throttle. Let's see if we can get around Mikey here. Waiting, still running behind him. Now on the throttle, underneath we go into second gear. Bouncing over the curb, Robbie Gordon, get around him as well. Now can we get around Yaley? That would be really excellent, really advantageous. And we do it. We do it. Second gear. And we set off in, in pursuit of the beer wagon and in the hands of Brad Keselowski. With, uh, we're going to have, uh, what, seven to go this time by. So it, this could go really well. This could go really bad. Kurt Busch is leading by a country mile, though. He's already through the hairpin and completing. Uh, the lap, so we've got uh, a long way to go here. As uh, there's a car entering the pits, it's Carl Edwards. So uh, cars pitting as well. We may be able to. I may have picked the right paint scheme because we may win this on fuel mileage. Now, obviously, with the with the time penalties factored in, I'm not sure what what's going to happen here. Uh, Spotter saying there's a car coming on the outside. There's Jimmy Johnson. He is he is absolutely coming, no doubt about it. He's right behind me. So I've got to be really careful here. Swung wide through one of the uh, left rights there. Back on the throttle. Johnson looked to the inside there. And Robbie Gordon could not do it. We're right up next to the wall. And the yellow is out. So it's Kyle Busch just simply losing it. Going through the grass and getting into the tire barrier. So the restart. We are going to restart Position one next to Paul Menard. Carl Edwards directly behind with J.J. Yaley as well in tow. Slowly coming down through the kink onto the main straightaway. Green is out. We're racing again. Menard gets a better restart. Is he going to be able to lead into turn number one? No. As we go up the hill under the bridge. Had to lock up the brakes a little bit. Menard gets into me. He is very aggressive. And Bobby Lapani takes the lead with Carl Edwards in tow and Jeff Gordon moving up into third. No, now I retake that position. So it's Ed, Labani from Edwards and then it's me in third. As yes, we go into Robbie Gordon here into first gear. Very gotta be, gotta be so careful there. Underneath Edwards. And are we gonna get Labani? Yes, we are. We kind of shoved him wide so Edwards is going to be able to get around as well 
Sorry, Bobby, you can't win this one. Edwards moves up into second. Labonte back to third. Now we lead this race here at Sonoma. So into third gear, lock a little bit of the brakes up on the throttle, and we've got to get through the hairpin really well. The braking is so crucial here, obviously, because it's a hairpin, but uh, you, if you get it right, you can really make up a lot of time, but if you get it wrong, you are in a world of hurt. We did get it right. A really good exit onto the main straightaway and crossing the line right now into the kink. And slowing down. Trying to get the car slowed down without locking the brakes all four wheels up. And now Edwards is directly behind. We lock it. We uh, spin the tires just a little bit. We do have older rubber than he does, I think, as we saw him going into the pits earlier. And we uh, do it again into Robbie Gordon here. One, gear one, there we go. Once again, around Carl Edwards. The battle is between myself and Edwards. I did not get a very good entrance into that hairpin. I pull a Tony Stewart in his duel with Denny Hamlin this year. But I was able to stay around him and on the brakes. Into the, uh, the uh, S's and the spotters yelling about getting caught. I'm trying not to get caught right now into third. Try to get around that corner really well. All I have to really do to win this thing is not do this. Which is get way too hard into the corner. Into the hairpin. Back out onto the straightaway. Thankfully did not lose the place. Jeff Gordon is now third, Labonte is now fourth. Three to go. So we've got three laps to hold on to this thing. It's like, I just barely get the thing woed down into turn number one. As Edwards is still right there. It's going to be potentially a very close finish here. As we go through the S's, or not the S's, I guess you could call it the first S's. There's a lot of S-corners here on Sonoma Raceway. Through Robbie Gordon, very good corner that one. For me, this one was not a very good corner. We swing wide. As we get on the throttle once again, maybe shift it up a bit early there, kind of uh, trying to minimize wheel spin. Wheel spin's a killer on these road courses, but we are leading Mr. Edwards here. Coming up to two laps to go this time by through the deceptively slow corner. That one on the brakes. The car woed down, get it turned. A little bit of lock up there. Not as good as I would have liked to have gotten through it. On the throttle again. Edwards is still there. In tow is Gordon. So it's still a three way battle for the lead as we get in the turn one. The spotter says we're way out in front. The uh, pictures would tell otherwise as we get on the brakes. I lost the back end just a little bit. Edwards was unable to capitalize on it. We are still running up at the front here as Edwards looking, looking with Gordon in tow. So Gordon may be in the best position here. He's the guy who may be able to benefit if Edwards and I get into each other, racing for the lead as we get a good run through Robbie Gordon there on the brakes. Very good apex on that one. Very good. Good exit, and we pull away from Edwards, who seems to have stuttered a little bit in the hairpin. So now uh, Gordon's all over the back of him, and we get a little bit of clean air here. A little bit of clean sailing. We're going to get the white flag this time by. One lap to go here at Sonoma as we go through deceptively fast and coming down into the hairpin for the second to last time. Is there going to be a fantastic finish? We're going to have to find out. I really did not get through the hairpin well that time either. The spotter says the car's to the inside. It wasn't quite there. It was Carl Edwards looking, but unable to do it. White flag crossing the line now to settle this one. I'm on the, uh, the brakes early. You may have seen a lock up as we go through the first corner. Going to be oh so careful here. Third gear. Probably driving a little too conservatively. There's Edwards. This is my worst section of the course. And just get through here all right. Edwards slides just a little bit. Unable to pass. Now we go into Robbie Gordon for the final time. Way out to the wall. 
Oh, I almost lost it. Edwards is making a move. He took a dive, but he wasn't able to get around. We are still leading this thing with Edwards going wide. He's off. Gordon loses it and gets into the wall. So now we're leading into the S's for the final time. Edwards takes a Here lunge again. Oh, this is going to be really close. This is going to be really close. In a third gear for the deceptively fast corner. Very good corner there. Got a good exit. Now into the hairpin for the final time. Do we get the braking right? Yes, we do. And we're coming through the hairpin for the final time. Is Carl Edwards going to pull in? No, he does not. Gordon gets into the back of him. Gordon's going to go around for a second, but it's not going to matter because we're going to take the victory at Sonoma. Done, and, of course, we finished third because of the penalties, but whatever. So the incredible race was all for naught because Jeff Gordon ended up making the pass on Carl Edwards to actually win the race uh, in an incredibly close finish. Uh, we technically crossed the line first, but NASCAR decided to take a victory away, uh, which uh, so we got Ricky rutted, apparently. So there you go. Bobby Labonte in second, Brad Keselowski in third, Casey Mears in sixth, Kurt Busch in seventh, uh, Dale Jr. eighth, Jimmy Johnson, and let's go down through the rest of the field to check out who is where for this race. It was an absolutely fun race. Tony Stewart ended up coming in 31st. He had the fastest lap, but uh, no points awarded for the fastest lap. And Paul Menard coming home dead last after uh, making a last-ditch effort on that last restart to pass. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to leave your feedback in the comments and leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. This has been David Land on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video.